Okay, baby. Play with your heart. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Dominate on three. One, two, three. Dominate. Travis Carey, California, way on the other side of the United States, man. So, anyhow, California, born and raised. Been out there for a while. Came out here to play ball, which is good. So, uh, back here in Ohio. Uh, Ohio. Uh, that is actually, I'm actually an old head. I'm in graduate school, man. So, my undergrad was in sports administration actually doing a graduate program and coaching education, which is good. I'm kind of doing a half and half coaching education within the recreational side of it, too. So kind of getting the both, of, both the best worlds, doing it from a coaching standpoint, where as far as I'm familiar with the issue, I'm familiar with the topic, and it's something that I've done from a little bit. And then the recreational side of it, just getting that extra benefit from that sports administration side, you know, knowing the ins and outs of both companies kind of studies and putting them together in one. I think it's a combination of a lot of things. You know, coming out of high school, kind of running into some trials and tribulations. Um, recently, back in the day, I had open heart surgery, so that caused a lot of trauma, caused a lot of things to be mixed up as far as SAT scores, grades, and things like that. So. A lot of it was who you knew. My brother actually played college ball in New Mexico State with the former coach that was here before I came, Ross Elves. And I gave him a call, sent him a highlight tape, everything was smooth, and he came up to a highlight. Well, the doctor said that I was born with a birth defect, so what, what ended up happening was one of my major arteries next to the heart was actually between the lungs so when I would run and exert myself the lungs would expand closing that artery which would um, allow me to pass out faint and very shortness of breath from a lot of activities that I did and uh, when I went to the first checkup for the doctor actually they couldn't really find a problem it actually took them a year to find a problem um, so my sophomore year I actually had the surgery high school and within that year it was very hard school and things like that I missed a lot of school which allowed me to fail a lot of classes it took the whole year my junior year to actually recover from the surgery and senior year was a blessing I had a, a good season and um, you know, I, I think the game today that is played uh, the risk of injury is very high and I've been one to experience it drastic amount of injuries, but yet still been able to successfully balance myself to the outside viewers to be still the top in my class or my position as far as I came in, hip surgery, hip labrum surgery my sophomore year, into my freshman year, going into my sophomore year. My junior year, I had a labrum tear on my right shoulder. And in this past year, actually, I tore that same shoulder again. So within the midst of being in college, I've had three surgeries, four total within my whole life. And um, each one, it makes you realize um, how much you can't take your life for granted. Things happen in the world. Um, you know, when you, when you look back and play the sport, you actually want to be able to look back and enjoy the rest of your life. You know, sports is only a short period of time in your life. And some of those things that you want to do after sports can be hindered with the amount of injuries you sustain so definitely I've been the one to experience a lot of the injuries and it's tough you know it's tough always coming back and being able to come back as full strength or better than you 
were or worrying about the injury and it's going to be okay going into the season. So it's definitely a mental thing. Lead by faith, not by sight. I think I'm very dedicated to my religion and I, I, I value what the Lord has done for me. And, you know, I don't want to sound so cliche, but it's, it's more of your belief. You're always optimistic about the world, and you never look at it as failure. You, know, you always see it in a positive light. You can never really be too stressed out. You can never feel so down where you want to do something to hurt yourself. You know, because you're always looking at it in a positive light. And if you make every failure an opportunity for success, then you have that opportunity to achieve great things. You know, and I think that's part of the reason why so many people today that I've grown up with may not have succeeded because they came across a crossroad where they felt that the blow was too heavy. You know, I, I, I do a lot of reading and things like that. And the people that are great today actually went through the toughest times. You know, Michael Jordan, Muhammad Ali's, you know, players, people, great works, you know, They've had tremendous losses. And you know, from those tremendous losses, they were always able to make them into a positive, to give them more energy, to keep going, more motivation, more drive, dedicating themselves even more to what they do to succeed. You know? So I think that the optimism keeps me focused as far as what I need to do in order to get to the place that I want to be. My work ethic comes strictly because um, you know, I want something bigger in life. To me, coming here, I did experience the party life my freshman year and things like that. But when you start buckling down and you start counting the years after freshman year, you start to realize, you know, what are the things that you want in life? You know, what are things in life that are still going to be there that you choose not to do them? And um, you know, I tell a lot of players now that, you know, party women, drinks, things like that, those are always going to be there in your life. You know? Why allow them to hinder your success, you know, when you're actually trying to achieve something? So, you know, my work ethic comes just from humbling myself and dedicating myself to the game that I love so much. And knowing one day after I reach my goal that those things will be actually better doing with the successful in hand than, you know, Worrying about how unsuccessful you are as a person and still trying to do those things. So, you know, work ethic is is what separates the good from the great. You know, I'm someone who has a big dream as far as I want to be somebody well known. I want to leave a, leave a legacy when I leave Ohio University. I don't want to just be another average George Mo. You know, so, um, I really dedicate myself to my craft and my techniques so that I can leave and my name can still be remembered. Years down, years down the road as far as, man, he was one of those guys that did everything right, did everything in order to put himself in the best position. So, you know, work ethic is, is key. Getting ready to cut up Jerry here. I'm you know, old school. I got all the tools, though. You know. Got my clipper spray. You know, I'm good. Oil machine. Gotta have that fresh out of oil. The brush. Master plan clippers. Got one right there. Some good liners. Fade baby. Final finale to cake. Can't go wrong with the cake, man. You know, it's, it's a little dirty from the Beijing I've been given, but uh, you know, it's, it's still get the job done. Still get the job done. Whatever works for the client. You know, actually, I started cutting hair because, um, just like, just like yourself, you know, I got tired of barbers. I don't know why I would pay a barber, barber to continue to mess my hair up. You know, so um, you know, me and my brother back in the day actually used to go to a particular barber, and um, you know, he was one of those guys who were was in the in the in the job for the money, not really having a passion for it. So you know, a lot of the times when we 
be upset for the barbershop, which should never happen. You know, so uh, Christmas before college, a couple Christmas before college, I got some clippers and I started. Um, I started perfecting my craft actually in freshman and sophomore year of college, and it, it, it took off big. You know, it took off bigger than I expected. Um, I think perfecting your craft in that particular business is very hard. You know, so many barbers. Everyone feels like they can cut their own hair. Everybody feels like they can cut hair. So you have to actually understand what you're doing. And sophomore year, junior year, I actually put more interest into it. Started to invest more in the business as far as uh, capes, brushes, you know, all type of other accessories that go along with, with uh, the business as well. And then, um, it took off. Something that set TJ apart from other barbers is that you don't just have to give him cash, he takes credit to it, you know? So whenever you don't have any money, can't, oh, I don't have any money, can I pay him back? You know? He has a little square joint right there, you know, and instead of cash or credit, you know, I'm playing with Okay, so I get, credit. get a phone with a customer, he swipe his card, and send him a receipt, come to me as well, along with the day. And that's how it works. The haircut, I'll pay for it, you know? And I'm ready for the clip. Ready to get out. You're right. Get out. <laughs> um, insane work ethic. Insane. You know, I, can, I can only speak for myself, but my work ethic is, is, is insane. And when you come from a small surrounding, maybe even a small school or something that seems so far fetched, the only thing that's going to set you apart is your work dedication that you have becoming humble as far as when you start to receive the blessings that you earn to get, you don't forget what you need to get there. So being humble is key. Sometimes the Lord and above has to put you in your place if you're not too humble. And uh, continue to dedicate your craft, your ability, your time to what you really want to achieve in life, I think you will always get there. If your time is 100 10 times 10, um, it'll always be there. But accumulating a work ethic where you're doing things that people don't see you doing, it's what making it is about. Because if you did, everyone, if, if you didn't have an insane work ethic, everyone would be around. Everyone would be in the field. Everyone would be in the baseball. Everyone would be doing these things at such a high level, but it's only a select few that can. It's because they do things that set them apart. They don't go out. They, they, their decisions are made based solely upon how it can greater their leap to success. You know? So the same work ethic, dedication, and being very humble. Uh, and you can see for myself, and I'm a very humble person. I don't take things for granted, and um, I would give that advice to anybody who has dreams or aspirations of achieving something that may seem so far-fetched or say, seem so for real as far as it's not possible. So I think that those those three tools will, will, will guide you, and you'll be able to find yourself the rest of the way. I'm asking all you guys to get up, get out, and do something. Stay motivated, stay driven, and humble yourself to what you want to do in life. And it happens. So there's nothing, there's nothing right here. All of this, it's blind. All of this is made, created. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it is. If you have blind edges, now you have baby edges? What did you say? If you have blind edges, now you have baby edges? It's blind baby edges. Okay. You now created the look. <laughs> Okay, now you, you see the line there now. Got the mustache, real nice, you know, cleaned up the facial. You know, one time he had to look like Trace Hall. <laughs> 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 <laughs>